All right, so we're going to take a look at another identity we would like to prove. We would like to prove that the sine of a plus b over the sine of a minus b is equivalent to cotangent b plus cotangent a over cotangent b minus cotangent a. And this one actually works good both, okay, both directions, about the same difficulty. Um, you're welcome to try either. I'm going to work from the left side, make it look like the right side. Okay, but again, you can do this side instead. What you would have to do is change everything to sines and cosines and then simplify this fraction. Okay, um, I'm going to work from this side because it has my identities in it and sometimes it's easier to work from the identities expanding than it is to try to create one. So let's try this. So sine A plus B is, right here's our identity for it, sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. And since they were nice enough to even use the same letters, here we go. So sine A cosine B plus cosine A sine B. Over, here we have sine A minus B, which our identity for sine A minus B is the sine of A cosine B minus cosine A sine B. Now at this point, I want to point out that some people would go, oh, look at all these things that are the same and start trying to cross off. Um, you can't because notice the addition and the subtraction here. It connects these two, so nothing can be crossed off unless you have multiplication involved over the whole top and the whole bottom. Okay, So we can't cross anything off. But what I would want to do is check it where I'm going. Where am I trying to go? I want to end up with cotangent B here. Okay, and you might do a little side work and go, well, what would cotangent B look like? It would look like cosine B over sine B, and cotangent A would look like cosine A over sine A over, and here my denominator cotangent B again would be cosine B over sine B minus, and this would be cosine A over sine A. So you look at where you're going. Where am I trying to go? I want this to look more like this. What's missing? Well, my denominators are missing. I don't have any denominators. Um, I would, I've got the cosine B in this one, but the problem is it needs to be divided by a sine B, and that sine A needs to go away. Okay. For this one, I've got the cosine A that I need, but I need a sine A underneath it, and this sine B needs to go away. Same thing happens in the denominator. Well, what we're going to do is use one of our tricks. So I need to be dividing by a sine A and a sine B to create what I wanted here. So if I divide this by sine A, sine B, the rule is I can do that as long as I do the same in the denominator. As long as you divide everything by that value, it's okay. Well, what happens when I do that? So I'm going to divide everything by sine A sine B. Well, that gives me sine A cosine B over sine A sine B plus, our next one was cosine A over sine B divided by sine A sine B all over. Now I need to divide all of these by sine A sine B. So I have sine A cosine B over sine A sine B minus, finally that was the cosine A sine B and it is also divided by sine A sine B. Okay, now let's see if we can simplify a little. Well see in this first one now this fraction by itself is all multiplication in top and bottom. So if things are common, I can cancel them. So I have a sine A of top and bottom. This cannot be canceled. Here I have sine B in top and bottom. This fraction, I have a sine A. And this fraction, I have a sine B. Well, what does that give me? That well, looks better. Cosine B over sine B plus... This is left with cosine A over sine A. And here I'm left with cosine B over sine B minus cosine A 
over sine a and look at that that's what I kind of mapped out that's what I needed because this is cotangent B this is cotangent a awesome that's what I needed to have in my numerator and down here this is cotangent B minus cotangent a because again cosine over sine is cotangent and with my work here I have proven the identity. This left hand side is in fact equivalent to the right hand side. So I expanded it using my sine, sum and difference of sine. Then I divided everything by sine A sine B because I kind of looked here what I needed and created it from there. And then I simplified and was able to get my value. This is one you could even maybe work a little on the left, a little on the right till they looked the same. In this identity, we're asked to prove that cosine a plus b times cosine b plus sine a plus b times sine b is just the cosine of a. Well, it's going to be near impossible to expand this right-hand side to look like this. It would be much easier to work from the left-hand side and use our identities okay, to show that it is, in fact, that right-hand side. So let's take our identities. We have an identity, identity for the cosine of a plus b, or cosine of two angles added, it's right here. It's cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. So I'm going to start with that. Okay, well, that whole thing was multiplied by cosine b. So I want to make sure I put parentheses around it because cosine b was multiplied by that entire value. Plus, now we have sine a plus b. Well, we have an identity for that also. The sine of a plus b is the sine a times the cosine of b plus the cosine of a times the sine of b. And that entire value was multiplied by sine b. So again, I'm going to put, going to put parentheses around that and put sine b right there. Okay, we need to continue simplifying. We definitely don't have just cosine a here. <laughs> so what we now need to do is in simplifying, we typically remove parentheses. So that is going to be our next goal. To remove the parentheses, we would have to distribute. So that's what we're going to do is distribute. Here, cosine b times these. Notice that gives me a cosine b times a cosine b which is cosine a cosine b times cosine b is cosine squared b minus um, none of those really combine so it just gives me sine a sine b cosine b okay plus i'm going to do the same with this set i'm going to multiply sine b through here again i have a sine a cosine b sine b none of them are the same so i just write them out as a product sine a cosine b sine b plus my last one um, notice I have a sine b times a sine b so that will be sine b squared so with our cosine a that gives us cosine a times sine squared b all right let's do a little simplifying here We're, we need to get down to just cosine a so we know a lot of stuff has to happen so let's take a look do we have any like terms mm, not really Unless you look at these two middle values, notice they had three things multiplied together. If they're the same three things, then we're good. This has a sine A, sine B, cosine B. This has sine A, sine B, cosine B. Order doesn't matter as far as the multiplication goes. One is positive and the other is negative. So together, we have zero of those. Okay, well, what's left? What's left is cosine A times cosine squared B plus cosine a times sine squared b. Well, one of our tricks is if you have a common term, you can factor it out. And especially here, since we know well, we're looking for cosine a. We've got cosine a here and here. I can factor it out, and I'm left with, 
cosine squared b for my first term. If I factor cosine a out here, I'm left with sine squared b for my second term. Well, one of our original identities said that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Um, putting them in opposite order does not make a difference. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So I have cosine a times 1, which is just cosine a. Hooray! That's what I was supposed to show it was equal to. So I have proven this identity using my trig identity.